What if the re-establishment of monarchy in Nepal could have a domino effect on other republics worldwide? As the debate around restoring Nepal's monarchy gains traction, the potential implications could reach far beyond its borders. Today, we'll explore the historical context, public opinion, political landscape and international context surrounding the possibility of Nepal's monarchy making a comeback and how it could potentially impact the global political landscape. Join us as we dive into this intriguing topic that could redefine the role of monarchies in the modern world. Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. Before we jump into today's topic, make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss out any of our upcoming videos. All right, let's get into it. Nepal, a beautiful country nested in the heart of Himalayas, has experienced significant political changes over the years. From being a monarchy for centuries to a federal democratic republic, the country has gone through various transformations. In this video, we'll explore the possibility of monarchy's re-establishment in Nepal, considering recent pro-monarchy protests, the ex-king's statements and the factors that could influence the outcome. We will examine the historical context, discuss political opinions, analyze the political landscape, assess constitutional and legal challenges and evaluate the international context. Moreover, we will look into the potential ripple effects that the restoration of Nepal's monarchy could have on the global stage. Nepal was monarchy for centuries, ruled by the Shah dynasty since the unification of the country in the 18th century. However, the monarchy's power began to decline in the 20th century and in 2006, a people's movement led by the political parties and the Maoist insurgents brought about the end of the autocratic monarchy. In 2008, the Constitutional Assembly declared Nepal's federal democratic republic and the monarchy was abolished. Public opinion on the re-establishment of the monarchy is divided. Some people believe that the monarchy could provide stability and continuity, especially in a country that has faced significant political turmoil. They argue that the kings of Nepal were symbols of national unity and played a critical role in preserving the country's cultural heritage. Proponents of the monarchy claim that the republican system has failed to deliver on the promises of good governance and has led to widespread corruption and political instability. On the other hand, others argue that the monarchy is an outdated institution that should not be revived. They contend that the royal family has often been autocratic and out of touch with needs of the people. Critics of the monarchy assert that it is essential for Nepal to move forward as a modern democratic nation and that restoring the monarchy would be a step backward. Recent events have further highlighted this division in public opinion. Since the monarchy's abolition in 2008, there have been pro-monarchy protests. In 2021, demonstrators clashed with police and pro-monarchy slogans were chanted at the 301st birthday of Patvi Shah, the first ruler of Shah dynasty. A recent poll suggests that 49% of the respondents were in favor of restoration and two years ago, one of the monarchy's parties gathered over 2 million signatories to support a referendum on the issue. The former king Ganendra has also broken with tradition by blaming political parties for the country's current situation, stating, Over these years, since the abolition of monarchy meaning, the country's long-term peace, stability and international respect and sovereignty have become to crumble. Now, to save this country, there should be no delay in cooperation between political parties, which are indispensable for democracy and a monarchy with a long patriotic historical heritage based on mutual trust. The political landscape in Nepal is another crucial factor when discussing the possibility of re-establishing the monarchy. The country operates under a multi-party system with various political parties fighting for power. The major political forces in Nepal, such as the Nepali Congress, the Communist Party of Nepal, which are unified Marxist-Leninists, and the Communist Party of Nepal, which are Maoist Center, 
do not generally support the reestablishment of the monarchy. These parties have played a significant role in shaping Nepal's current democratic system and have vested interest in maintaining the status quo. However, smaller parties and groups advocate for the restoration of the monarchy. They argue that the monarchy's return would help to stabilize the country and provide a sense of continuity. Despite their advocacy, these smaller parties and groups have limited political influence and have struggled to gain traction amongst the wider population. An issue for the Nepalese monarchists is that many of them either stay at home during the elections or vote for parties other than the monarchist parties. So take a look at this video where we are debating should monarchies go and vote in republics. Additionally, the voters for monarchist parties are often split between multiple smaller monarchist parties. This division dilutes their potential impact on the political landscape. The biggest problem, however, is that the major parties do not seem to care about this issue, as evidenced by their lack of engagement with the pro-monarchy movement and the absence of serious discussions about the restoration of the monarchy. The re-establishment of the monarchy in Nepal would face significant constitutional and legal challenges. The current constitution, adopted in 2015, enshrines the country as federal democratic republic, and any attempt to restore the monarchy would require amending the constitution. This would require a two-thirds majority in the parliament, which is currently unlikely, given the opposition from the major political parties. Moreover, the process of amending the constitution would be continuous and potentially lead to further political instability, which may not be in the best interest of the country. As such, the constitutional and legal barriers to re-establishing the monarchy present a formidable obstacle to those advocating for its restoration. The international context is another crucial factor to consider when discussing the possibility of re-establishing the monarchy in Nepal. Countries like India, China and the United States have strategic interests in the region and may not be in favor of any significant changes to Nepal's political system that could lead to increased instability. India in particular, has had a historically strong relationship with Nepal and has played a significant role in shaping the country's political trajectory. China, on the other hand, has been increasing its influence in Nepal, offering economic assistance and infrastructure development support. The United States, while not as directly involved, also keeps a close eye on the region due to its strategic importance. Given the potential reservations of these international stakeholders, it is unlikely that they would openly support the re-establishment of the monarchy, especially if it could lead to further destabilization of the region. In conclusion, the possibility of re-establishing the monarchy in Nepal is a complex and multifaceted issue. While there are voices calling for its restoration, significant legal, political and social obstacles stand in the way. The current political climate and public opinion seems to be more focused on addressing the country's numerous challenges and improving the governance rather than revisiting the question of the monarchy. Furthermore, any attempt to re-establish the monarchy would require overwhelming constitutional and legal barriers as well as achieving consensus among major political parties, including the communist ones. Given the current state of the affairs and the lack of support from the major political forces and international stakeholders, the prospects of re-establishing the monarchy in Nepal appears slim. However, it is important to remember that the politics is a dynamic and evolving process and the future is never set in stone. If the restoration of the monarchy were to occur in Nepal, it could potentially have a domino effect on the other republics worldwide. 
The example set by Nepal could inspire similar movements in the other countries where monarchies were once abolished. However, whether these movements would gain enough traction to lead the actual restoration in other nations remains to be seen. As the country moves forward, it is essential for the people of Nepal and their political leaders to engage in open and inclusive dialogue about the future of their nation. Whether or not the monarchy is ultimately restored, it is crucial that Nepal's political system remains responsive to the needs and aspirations of the people and that it promotes peace, stability and prosperity for all. What do you think about the possibility of re-establishing the monarchy in Nepal? Do you believe it could have a domino effect in other republics worldwide? Or is it an outdated institution that could be left in the past? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video and are interested in learning more about monarchies, we've got some great content for you. Be sure to check out our other videos exploring the world of monarchism, where we look into the history, current events and future prospects of the royal families all across the globe.